get a lot of questions about how do I keep track of my pastels? How do I know which ones to buy? And how do I remember all the color names? Well, first of all, I do not know all the color names. And in fact, I know very few of them, just a handful, if that. So I do have a couple of ideas about keeping track. And I can tell you how, what process I went through. When I first started out, I tried to make a, a chart of my own and put swatches and keep track of the numbers. But pretty soon that, that got out of hand for me. I just couldn't keep up. So I pretty much abandoned this method. But it is a good method because, um, and it's cheap, you can do it yourself. It's just time, time and labor intensive. Um, because ordering from, as you might um, know and have already experienced, ordering from the color charts that are printed or ordering from online color charts is really not accurate at all and leads to a lot of disappointment. I would order pastels and they'd come to me and I'd be really inevitably disappointed and have to return them if I could. Um, lo lost some money doing that as well. So that this isn't a really great method. And so this wasn't working for me. Then the next thing that I tried was um, the, the pastels that have wrappers. I would take the wrappers off and I'd make a little baggie that was sort of my shopping list. The problem with that is, of course, that some of the wrappers are really difficult to get off and kind of makes a mess and hard to keep the numbers. Some of the pastels don't even have wrappers. Um, Terry Ludwig's and Giro's, um, the new pastels in open stock now do have a wrapper, but those are really hard to get off. So. This method didn't work very well for me either. So Terry Ludwig has a, a little swatch chart that comes with his pastels. Um, when you buy the box, the, the pastels are in their little foam inserts, and he provides a sheet like this, and you can make your own swatch from on this sheet. That's a good one good way. However, this is inexpensive paper and this rubs right off. So pretty soon this can get kind of messy unless you're really, really careful. So um, that's, that's one thing. So what I have done over time is I have invested in color charts that have actual swatches on them. And these I purchased Oops, upside down. Purchased from Dakota Pastels in La Conner, Washington. And I've purchased over time. I didn't do it all at once because, you know, they are, they are an investment um, of um, swatch sets, um, charts of all the brands that I really like to use. So Terry Ludwig, Unison, Schmenke. Um, so uh, I have these. So whenever I have questions about what pastels I need to buy, I can refer to these charts, charts and they're really accurate. Now, the, the disadvantage of using these is, of course, your pastels, when, they're, when you're using them and you have all the wrappers off, they get in different states and so they look different. So really getting a sense of your pastels and having worked with them getting a lot of mileage with them. Oops, it's windy in here today. Getting a lot of mileage with your pastels is really important so that when you pick up a stick, you know, okay, this is a Terry Ludwig. I can tell by the shape of it, by the texture of it. When I make a stroke with it, what does it look like? And so that mileage that I always talk about and the, just the motor memory of working with these guys and the tactile memory um, is really important. So that I know even this one that's in kind of a odd state, it doesn't really have that Terry Ludwig look, but I know it is a Terry Ludwig from its feel and its texture. I know this one is a Giro by the shape of it. It also has printed on it, stamped in it, Giro. So that's pretty easy. Of course, the new pastels are um, pretty easily identifiable. So 
the charts in concert with a lot of mileage and just really getting to know my sticks um, is how I identify them and keep track of them and shop for them. So I hope that's helpful to you and um, uh, any questions just give me a jingle. Okay, bye.